This video is on pommels coming from the square down to the round like that. Now some of them can be formed with the skew chisel like this. Others need a gouge like that. The hardest cut in my opinion in wood turning and to get it right is this one here where it goes in straight across because if you get it angled off it looks terrible it undercuts down in here or it overcuts here and it just doesn't look right. So the first criteria is that the timber must be machined square and straight. If it's got long side or a parallelogram or anything you won't be able to do it. So we'll go through the ways of doing it. This by the way is for the different shapes on the tops of table legs. This one here is used a lot on newel posts where you've got a very wide handrail or something like that or on a table where you've got a very wide apron you can get the timber down in there otherwise you'd end up with too much of a square piece that looks terrible. That's just another idea in there like that. This one here is used sometimes in the middle of uh, bed posts and that to attach bed rails to. First thing to do is mark the centres. Now you've got to accurately mark the centres and for that I normally use a marking gauge and do all four sides. And I thank Alan Batty, the late Alan Batty, for this idea of uh, staining the timber black. Makes it much easier to see in demonstrations where the cuts are going. Now the next thing I do is just send a pop or punch. A little dimple in the middle there. The advantage of the marking gauge marking all that way is that it leaves a little dimple for the point of the, the marking gauge to actually the, rib, the punch to go into. I knew I'd get it eventually. Now the next thing you do is you just sit it between centres. Don't put any pressure on or tighten it. It's handy if you leave about an inch of quill out from the tail stock so that you don't have to keep moving it for the various lengths and things. Uh, table legs and chair legs should all be cut to the same length anyway. Now the next thing to do, get your tool rest into place. As I said, not too close. Square a line across for where your pommel has got to be. And then we've got to centre it in the lathe. The way that we centre it is by pinching the skew chisel. You always use the long point to mark out with. Pinch the skew chisel between your thumb and your forefinger. Now the forefinger locks into the tool rest down here so that it can't, you can't move the chisel in or out unless you want to. And you've got to bring each four corner, just line up a corner like so, Rotate the timber, and the object is to hit every corner. Always do both ends, and always mark in the waste side of the timber, not the good side of the timber. Gee, that one came in perfect. I've deliberately moved it off centre. When you go, if it is off centre at all, what you do is find the high spot, put it to the top like that, and give it a knock. 
with a skew chisel or a rubber hammer or whatever and knock it down. Don't try and adjust it with the tail stock because it will only fall back into its original hole again. So what you do is you knock it down, that slices through the grain and keeps it there. Once you've done that, just bring the tail stock up a little bit to hold it in that position and then try it again until you get it on centre. Anywhere within half a mil is pretty good. I'll recenter this again properly. Once you've got it centred, tighten the tail stock up. Now just as an aside, I don't bother putting the tail stock lock in like that until I've actually run the lathe for a minute or so and then I'll tighten the tail stock because what happens is the drive spur will dig a little hole in it or the tail stock end will dig a little hole in it and it will come loose so you've got to tighten it then tighten it and then lock it down after it's run for a minute or so. Right, there's two parts to a pommel where it finishes against the round here and where it starts coming in off the square either there or there like that. So it pays to put two lines on like that so that you've got your start here and your finish here and then it's just a matter of aiming the chisel towards them that, but that's easier said than done. Now there are three ways of doing pommels. I was taught this way that you use a roughing gouge and come in about halfway along between the two marks there and take it down to round like that and then using the skew chisel mark where your line finishes This is where you use the short point coming up to the shoulder down in there. So that you get a nice clean thing out. Then I was taught to use the short point the short corner or the short point to come in and just aim for the Now, there is very little side pressure against the cut. And you should end up with a nice, clean surface down here. Now, as you can see, this one's got to go just a fraction deeper. It's not quite square, not quite round yet. And the paste end up with a nice clean line here. Nothing looks worse than fuzzy. Still needs a little bit more off, I can feel it. Right. We end up with a nice clean surface down here. The other way to do it is again put two lines in. Now on the finish line, which is down here, make a series of V cuts. And then using the long point, aim it straight, always start 
away from the line into the waste area here, about, oh, I start at the halfway mark and then slowly creep back onto that line. Again, it is very little side pressure. In a previous video I showed how to do discs and that's the pressure that you use. And you should end up with a nice clean cut down here, like this. It starts on the line, finishes on the line down there. Now if you exert too much side pressure, this is what you will get. I'll do it onto this one. You'll end up with a very rough surface down here because as a, as the timber rotates it's naturally falling into roughly fresh air and the slower that you do it the worse the effect actually is. So a little bit of speed is very good here. I'll get rid of this bit here. I'll just peel it out. Now, if you are sanding, if you have to sand this, don't do it while it's rotating, otherwise this is the effect. tend to get a round over on the leading edge here as it's coming towards you and it leaves a fuzzy edge on this sort of, it destroys the line of the cut so it looks a bit ragged. Now if you do have to sand them get a piece of ply or something rigid, 12 inch rule sometimes works good, and sand them by hand so that you don't dub this edge over here like this. Now you can do it with it rotating as well. Just hold it in nice and square to the timber and leave it nice and crisp. But invariably you always get a little bit of a round over in there which doesn't look very good at all anyway. So you're better off making just the plain cut straight away. So that's two different ways, I said three, but that's two different ways of forming the pommel and one way will be easier for you than others, it's the same with most cuts, um, you find an easy way to do it. So that's how, it, the only time that you don't have a start and a finish line is when you've got a straight cut like this one here and as I said that is the worst cut to make. Now I'll work on this line here. The chisel, the bevel of the chisel must face at right angles to the timber. Otherwise you'll get this effect. I'll just get rid of it. you make the entry is important. If you go in too quickly you will get this effect. If you force the chisel in you get a raised up section here and in the worst case you can actually break out the fibres like here. So with the straight cut it's got to be dead straight 
Oh, that looks terrible. I'll just tidy this one up. Again, there's very little side pressure on the thing. That hopefully is the way it should look. Nice and straight across the thing. Now, if you put too much side pressure on, you get this effect. And this is grossly exaggerated, but gives you the idea. It curves around in underneath. It gets an undercut in under there, and it looks oh, so bad. And generally, you'll chip out a corner like that. So a gentle cut in, nice and gradually, in a dead straight line, with this bevel facing exactly at right angles to the timber. Going back the other way, of course, you get this effect if you don't get it straight. You get a curve in it like that. There are actually two very good videos on doing pommels, and I'll put a link down the bottom in the description so that you can get them. One is by the late Alan Batty. The other one is by um, Steve Jones, Woodturner 21.